All right, we are live. Hello, everybody, and we are going to start the next chapter of the Professor Layton retrospective. We went through the Curious Village and solved its mystery, and this time we will be solving the mystery of Pandora's Box, or as we call it over here in the uh, Western regions, uh, the Diabolical Box. I like the Ring of Pandora's Box better, so let's get into it. <laughs> Oh yeah, another good thing about the European version. This game gives you a normal fucking keyboard. <laughs> I, re I remember vividly when I was playing Diabolical Box for the first time, you had to like write out each fucking letter of the name like it was goddamn Brain Age or something, and the letter detection was so wonky, it was it was awful. I, they ne and, that is why and that is why after that game, every single one of them just uses a normal keyboard, like a normal game does. <laughs> I don't know why they did that for that version. That was that was weird. But uh, you know, it's me, Perry. So This is a work of fiction. The characters, groups, and events portrayed within are in no way intended to resemble those of the real world. Damn. There are tales of Did somebody did somebody get onto their case about Curious Village that bad that they needed to add that? <laughs> Do you think those rumors could be true? Big if true. Big if true about that box. <laughs> yep, we got a little bit of... We, we, we're we seeing everybody here. We got Chelmy, we got Layton, Luke, Flora. Just... The gang's all here. Getting on this train. Just look at this room! Yes, I can certainly see why some call the Molan Terry Express a cruise ship on rails. Hey, sofa's great! <laughs> now, don't forget, Luke. A gentleman pays attention to his manners. In every setting. All aboard! So nostalgic, bro. I haven't played this in 20 years. <laughs> it's been 10 years for me, but yeah, it's... It's it's all coming back. I can't wait to just re-experience this. And and the ones after it, even if I've played those more recently. Yeah, this game in Azran Legacy, I think I've gone the longest without playing, so it'll be interesting to uh revisit them. I mean of course I'm looking forward to doing all of the games, but you know. Where's he? Uh if I remember, isn't he like Mid to end game. Behind this Elysian box, anyway. All who open it die. Sounds awfully fishy to me. Perhaps so, but we've seen it happen with our very own eyes. The answer is out there, Luke, but I just need to find it. We will. I know it. Damn, that's a that's a sting cord. Fuck. <laughs> Prologue: The Elysian Box. To my dear friend, Perry. There was a box that was rumored to kill anyone who opened it. At first, neither the professor nor I believed it. So yeah, you can see this game definitely has a slightly bigger budget than the last game. There is more, there is more voiced dialogue in this prologue than I think the entirety of the first game. <laughs> look, have a look here. We even have, we even have voiced, uh, we even have voiced visual novel bits. Is it Pandora or Elysian's? But the 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 title screen calls it Pandora's box. But throughout all the versions, it is called the Elysian box in the context of the game. I don't I don't really get the discrepancy, but you know, Pandora's box does have a very nice ring to it, so I will allow it. I guess that's why maybe they chose Diabolical box. It's a bit more like you know, it's a bit more like you know, the adjective. I suppose I don't know. <laughs> what am I talking about? It's a letter from my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Andrew Schrader. Is oh. everything alright? 
Hmm. My dear Herschel, as an archaeologist, you are sure to have heard of the item known as the Elysian box. Is it Elysian or Elysian? Fuck! <laughs> It is more commonly known as Pandora's box. Oh, there it is. In reference to the famous myth. So it goes by this both. It goes by both. Okay. To be well deserved, since it is rumored to kill whoever opens it. I'm dubious of this reputation, of course, but when my interest is piqued, I simply must investigate. That's why I'm pleased as punch to tell you that the elusive item is finally in my possession. What's more, I believe I'm on the cusp of unraveling a great mystery tied to this box. For the moment, let's just say I have a theory, though I haven't been able to prove it yet. Initially, it was my intention to finish my research before daring to open its lid. Buddy. But I must confess that my curiosity is simply overpowering. Oh, fuck. In the unlikely event that anything should happen to me, Please, finish the work I've started here. Your friend, Andrew Schrader. Well, he's dead. According to the <laughs> postmark, this letter was sent two days ago. We should go pay the doctor a visit. I just can't shake the feeling that something awful has happened. Well, your intuition's usually spot on. I say we head out right away. All right, let's go then. The Elysian box is an antique said to bring death upon anyone who dares open its lid. According to rumors, the box has already claimed many lives and is known as Pandora's box in many parts of the world. Could such dark rumors be true? Luke, before we go, would you be so kind as to fetch my car keys? Then one of the drawers in that desk. Will do, Professor. Um, if there's something you wish to interact with, Luke, you need to only reach out and touch it. Okie doke. Search by touching the drawers of the desk. Okie dokie. That's simple enough. Bonk. Bonk. Oop. So yeah, one of the first things off the bat, you'll notice, between Curious Village and Diabolical Box, thank god, not everything results in the red exclamation point when you click it, which is just... This is what I'm used to. This is what I'm fucking used to. Red exclamation points should only be used for puzzles, damn it! <laughs> Many thanks, Luke. Now, let's get moving. And then we get into the other tutorials, where most of the rest of the stuff is basically the exact same. Just move with the shoe icon and just go all around the place. Oh wait, we haven't learned about hint coins yet. I don't think there would be any in here. Let's go. That's the way, my boy. <laughs> you know, Luke, if you want to touch something, you only have to use your arms. <laughs> One can't investigate properly without doing a little legwork, as they say. I couldn't agree more, Professor. Now, shall we head off? Let's. There's be a lot going on in the area. Yeah, ain't that for sure. Is that an office or a cafe? Hmm. That's the question, isn't it? Luke, before we set out, it would be wise of us to confirm the, doc the location of the doctor's flat. During one of his visits some time ago, he was kind enough to leave me a map to his home. The map itself, however, is a rather unusual piece of cartography. Look here, Luke. Oh, fuck. Oh, how clever! The map itself is a puzzle! Professor, do you mind if I take a look at it? Or a crack at it? I just know I can solve this one! Yeah, sure. Oh, fuck! A puzzle! They just show up everywhere now, don't they? Several pieces have been cut out of the middle of the map to Dr. Schrader's home. Complete the map by sliding the pieces with the stylus and inserting them in the right places. It may sound simple, but don't forget that you can move or remove pieces, including the one already in the middle of the map. <laughs> Who put puzzles in the visual novel? What the shit? <laughs> uh, well, first, let me see if there's anywhere I can move this that would make more sense than what, it's, what it is at currently. Not really, though I might just need to remove it at some point. We will see. Uh, no, that's not right. This might, no. Wait, wait. Nope. Okay. Mm, just match up things, and eventually something will work. Uh, oh, that kind of would work if the middle wasn't like that. Let me see if there's a better middle piece I can find. 
We also need a piece that connects to, oh, just like that. Just like that, okay. Uh, we need one that's like basically vertical. On the right side, we need one that's vertical and connects both ways at basically the exact same place, which makes me think of this one. Ah, how about that? But now we need one that connects in the middle. We need something that connects with these corners right here. Oh yeah, we also have a notepad now. I've, so we need something that connects these two. That would be nice. They actually made the first puzzle the hardest. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but it, it's definitely a bit trickier than uh, Curious Village's first puzzle, where it was just process of elimination. But see, already done. Easy, easy peasy. Hmm. See if this works. That was almost too easy. Excellent work. Now let's hurry to the doctor's flat. Pick rats are points that indicate a puzzle's difficulty. The more pick rats a puzzle is worth, the tougher it is. We know this. Think before you answer, fucker. Also, yeah, bonuses. Forgetting a lot of them. So let's just, yeah, we know. We know. We're good. <laughs> Excellent. With our destination confirmed, we are ready to pay the doctor a visit. Come now. All right, we are done here. Let's move. The F in the middle piece with respect. <laughs> God. <laughs> no thinking, we just bash our heads and hope it works. I'd, I'd like to think I put some thought into that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, now that we have a memo, what am I gonna do with all these napkins? <laughs> oh well, I do believe we found the doctor's building. Which flat is his? That, I'm afraid, I don't know. But come to think of it, the letter I received did mention something about this place. Puzzle 2! Already! Oh no! The doctor's home. Find Dr. Schrader's window from the details in his letter. In the morning, I often wake up to the sound of music drifting in from a nearby flat. Looking out, I spy a flag fluttering gently outside my window, take a single sip of my tea, and turn my attention to the morning sun. Not many flats in London have a view of the sunrise anymore, you know. Circle the window from which the doctor views the sunrise. Oh boy. He's going to world changing patents on the napkins. Fair enough, yeah. Hmm. So... Hmm. I'm going to say right off the bat, it's not this one. Since that's not a flag, that's a shirt. <laughs> Somebody's just hanging out their laundry to dry. Uh, I often wake up to the sound of music drifting from a nearby flat. Looking out by a flag fluttering gently outside my window. Well, actually... Wait, no, that could be his. That could be his because that's the only one without a flag, actually. Maybe that is his thing, and, you know, he's looking for a flag next to his. I just realized. Fuck. So that could be his, but it can't be. It can't be one of the ones next to him, so I don't think it's this one. That is music, though. That's music right there, so maybe this is the one right here. Or maybe, maybe that's a trick question. Also, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, divert attention briefly to this little cat. That's peeking outside this window. I just, <laughs> I just think that's really cute. I don't know why. <laughs> Look at him. What a lad. <laughs> but yeah, let me. <clears throat> yeah, that cat is vibing. He's just, he's just sitting there. <laughs> he he probably heard the music too, and he was like, oh yeah, let me let me get in on that action. But okay, no seriously. Enough beaten around the bush. We all know that it's it, it's got to be near this one. However, however, another thing is that I just remembered about this puzzle is that it's also a little bit. It could be a bit of a trick question because there's also these. There are these right here, and those could very much be important. You never know. These games, they like to trick you. He's got to see the flag. He's got to see the... Well, wait. Outside his window. Yeah, outside his window. The flag is right there on that window. I just realized. And then the music's over there. And then he sees the sunrise. It's the closest one to... It, it's got to be that one. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, game. This puzzle solved. Yeah, that's why I thought. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right, now you know where it is. Head for the doctor's home. We still can't see his styles. Fair enough. I'm trying to be a bit more like descriptive now that I have the memo, but you know. 
Sometimes my, uh, sometimes I just want to just go, go, go and get the thing. <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken, I think we found this flat. Now follow me, Luke. We're going up. All right. Oh, I nearly forgot. Before we leave, let me remind you how to use this trunk. Yep. You tap it and you get all these little convenient recap tools as well as a save point wherever you need it. There's also, uh, these three mysterious things down here. What could they be? Hamster is one of them. Yes. <laughs> I remember that hamster causing me a lot of trouble back in the day. <laughs> but it was fun. So just touch the trunk icon whenever you need to access it. Alright. Oh, hi, you. Hello there, mister. Never seen you around here before. I want to hear something useful. All right, see that post box over there? Try touching it with your stylus for me, will ya? Oh wait, where's where's Stash and Scarf? And I thought he was the hint coin guy for all three of the original games, huh? Brilliant! That's a hint coin you found there. Ever been stuck trying to solve a puzzle? It's times like those I bet you'd fancy a hint, yeah? But when that happens, you can trade in those shiny hint coins for hints. They're scattered all over the place, which means you should always be on the lookout for them. Use your stylus and touch anything that looks suspicious, okay? Good, well, that's all I had to say. You take it easy, mister. Well, thank you. What a what a kind boy. There's got to be more around here. Come on. There, there, I, there's, yep, okay, at least one more. <laughs> I'm satisfied. Run, boys, run. But first, flowers are nice, but we got to get into that flat. But, but what if there's a puzzle hidden around here? Come on. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Oh wait, the puzzle was the way for it. <laughs> because of course it is. This is Dr. Serrata's flat, I'm sure of it. Dr. Serrata, are you home? It's Herschel Layton, I came as soon as I read your letter. Oh, hello, are you there? They can't run with their short little, little, little five heart style legs. <laughs> hello, are you there? Doctor? I don't hear anyone in there, Professor. What if he's... This is no time for idle speculation. We must get this door open first. It seems to be locked. So without a key, there's no way to get in. Ah, of course. How could I have forgotten? These, these keys were enclosed in the envelope, along with the doctor's letter to me. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, Christ. Quick, Professor. Let me try them on the door. Huh? That's strange. Doesn't seem like any of these keys work on the lock. Luke, don't you see? The doctor set yet another puzzle for us to solve. Well, I don't think that... <laughs> I don't know if the doctor was expecting this level of urgency when he set all these puzzles. <laughs> Which of these keys opens the door? Use the stylus to move the keys and find the one that fits the lock. Careful observation of the shapes is required to find the right one. Well, if I remember correctly... This is... Luke, you had it all wrong. Oh. Well, I, okay, I remember it has to be one of them flipped backwards, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that one a lot. <laughs> there are some puzzles that I just, they just click immediately. I remember that. <laughs> That's right. How long did it take you to realize that the grips of the keys be inserted into the lock? No time at all, because I've done this before. Also, nice, uh, crisp HD latent hand. The little lesson about the danger of making assumptions should serve you well in your puzzle-solving adventures. All right, let's get in there. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Well, I'm true. Please don't eye the hand. It was their fault for putting it up in front of me. <laughs> this is terrible, Professor. Do you ah, suppose the Elysian okay. Box did this to Dr. Strange when he opens it? You know, it's actually quite it's actually quite good that there are some points where the vo where the game will be voiced for me. So that that means I can give my voice a rest this time around. I honestly don't know, Luke. But that can wait. Right now, we need to notify the police. Of course, Professor. Hmm? What do we have here? 
Hmm. Oh. A train ticket for the Molentary Express. Hmm. Look at this, Professor. There's no destination written on the ticket. Huh. I've never seen a ticket that didn't say where it was taking you. How strange. Yes, very strange indeed. Hmm. Hmm. A single ticket with no visible destination was discovered in Dr. Schrader's home. It appears to be for the Molentary Express, but where exactly is it supposed to take its bearer? Oh, hi, you. Yo, Barton, my boy. <laughs> Well, Inspector Chum is the name. You two found the body, did you? Oh, oh shit. Luke, what are you doing? No, Luke. Let him go. <laughs> I like how Barton's just doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, Luke, no shit. Like, even if it was... Like, even if it was somebody in disguise, I don't think it'd be Don Paolo. He doesn't seem like the kind of person to do the same dis to do the same disguise twice. Oh, what in the blazes? That's my face, not some piece of taffy. <laughs> oh, now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't mean it. I am. Um, we surely had another imposter on our hands. What in the world is this child talking about? I swear. Your ones these days have no manners. My apologies for the confusion. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Herschel Layton. I'm a professor of archaeology at Crescent Heller University. And I'm his apprentice, Luke. Interesting. So if I understand correctly, you keep a child around as an apprentice, do you? Not at all, sir. In truth, he's... Professor Layton's apprentice, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really none of my concern. I have a crime scene that needs my attention. Clear a path, will you? But of course. No, not a word about that ticket to the authorities, all right? You got it, Professor. Hmm, yes, let's see. What do we have here? A murder? Or was the crime so inflicted? Hey Ollie, we're still in the uh, prologue. We have uh we found one of Leighton's old uh, old old friends dead and uh we now have uh the inspector here to uh help us sort of figure things out. What's going on? Inspector, I should tell you that the door was locked before Luke and I came in. Hmm. I see. So this door, the sole entry point in and out of this eighth floor flat, was shut tight. <laughs> yes, Luke tried to rip off Chelmy's face because he thought that he was uh he was uh, somebody in disguise again like last time. <laughs> then the doctor was holed up in here, completely apart from the outside world, yes? That being the case, yes, I'm sure of it. The old gent must have suffered a heart attack. What? How did you come to that conclusion, sir? Hmm. Use your noodle, Maddie. What other explanation could there be? It's true that the flat is on the eighth floor and that the door is locked, Inspector. Still, I'd hesitate to say that this room was completely closed off from the outside. Is that so? Please elaborate. Isn't it obvious? Hmm. There's something quite unusual about our crime scene that's been overlooked. Hey? It's as plain as the nose on your face, Inspector. <laughs> I suppose you academics make your fancy degrees prepare you to play detective, eh? <laughs> I tell you, nowadays, it seems like everybody and their mum thinks they can do my job. 
Yeah, it's almost like there's a whole video game genre sort of about playing detective at this point. <laughs> now, as I was saying, the cause of death was heart failure, plain and simple. And there's what caused it. Eh? This... It's a scaled-down model of a Kronosaurus, if I'm not mistaken. I reckon that as they might will give anyone like this. Here's what probably happened. The old fellow turned on the light, took one look at the beast, and then killed right over. Mm. This is the doctor's own home. Yeah. Why would the bones he put up himself scare him? Unless he was unless his memory was going at his old age. People have a way of becoming forgetful with age. Not that you'd understand, boy. When well, you're right about that, I don't understand it at all. <laughs> Mr. Letton, was it? No? Ah, yes, Layton. Mr. Layton. Tell me, that's the dumbest theory I've ever heard. How do you have a job? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna show you code anymore. Tell me, what are you, what are you on about? The scenario you came certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. But, considering the lights were off when we entered the room, I don't think we found our answer yet. Oh, uh, really? Furthermore, look around you, Inspector. Doesn't anything strike you as odd? What do you mean, Professor? Mm. Study your surroundings, Luke. I'm sure you can see it, too. Hmm, a secure room. Puzzle number four. <laughs> I was just tired looking at the dinosaurs go to his own home. I'm a genius. <laughs> Given that the doctor's flat is on the 8th floor, and that the door was securely locked, you might think there was no way in or out of the room. However, a single suspicious detail provides a clue as to what went on here. Look in all four directions and examine the room carefully. When you think you found a telltale detail, circle it with the stylus and touch submit. Be sure to circle only one object, or else your answer won't count. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> only one. <laughs> So we got, oh, we got, we got, uh, we got four different, uh, screens to look at here. So, hmm. Yeah. I mean, yes, that, but that's also just kind of, that, that, <laughs> to me, that's part of the charm, because it's just like, <laughs> sometimes it just happens at the most inopportune times, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, hmm. What's a telltale sign around here, though? Hmm. To me, I'm eyeing that curtain right there. But let me double check, just to make sure. Well, that curtain's completely fine. And like nothing else is really striking me as out of the ordinary here. So if I'm remembering right, then yes, I think I, I think it's I think it's this curtain right here. A lot of this is just a lot of this is just gonna be me like recounting like the last time I played this like 10 years ago, but I'm sure there'll be some puzzles I don't remember that still stump me. But early game, I'm gonna be remembering a lot. For some reason, part of the curtain has been ripped clean off. What could have happened here? Uh, uh, lovely DS audio compression. <laughs> so it is. But what exactly does this have to do with my crime scene? Hmm. Oh shit. It means someone exited the building through this window, and I'll bet they're our culprit. Hmm. Perhaps. I'd say that's a sound theory. Well done, my boy. Yeah. Good job, Luke. Oh, uh, yes. Sound as a pound. I was just about to propose the same idea myself. <laughs> Tell me, shut up. <laughs> the inspector would be of much help to us. What say you and I conduct a little investigation of our own? Professor, look! There's something in Dr. Schrader's hand! Ooh, what's this? It's an old photograph, but it's been torn into so many pieces 
I can't make out the original image. Does that mean it's puzzle time? Ah, <laughs> oh, not quite. Torn fragments of a photograph are found in the late doctor's hand. In its current state, it's impossible to make out the contents of the photo. What could it be depicting? Hey, what's the big idea? You can't just pour evidence in a crime scene. Get your hands off that. Uh, that. Uh... <laughs> that what? Eh? What is this anyway? Exactly. <laughs> hmm, not that it matters. I'll be holding on to that. Now, out with the both of you. Damn. He found a torn photo, but Inspector Chelmy confiscated it. Damn it! Oh! But we haven't finished! Dr. Schrader indicated that he was in possession of the Elysian box, yet there was nothing resembling such an artifact in his home. Maybe the person who did this to him was after the box! An interesting theory, Luke, but for the moment, that's all it is. However, we do have one clue to understanding today's events, namely, that ticket. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Professor? Indeed I am, Luke. I believe that a trip aboard the Molentary Express is in order. Alright. And that is how we come to where we go. That is how we... That, 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 <laughs> that brings us to the present, if I'm remembering correctly. Somebody managed to steal the Elysian box from Dr. Schrader's home without leaving behind a single implicating clue. Who could have made off with the box? <laughs> what is it with latent detectives being complete morons? <laughs> I mean, hey, look, you may be right, but <laughs> Inspector Grosky from the prequel trilogy is a treasure, okay? <laughs> Do you suspect we'll find the key to unlocking this mystery on the train? Dr. Schrader did his best to point us towards the Molentary Express should something happen to him. Sure as fog on London morning, I, should, I know this train will lead us to the answers we seek. Professor Layton and Luke sped away from the city. Unaware yeah, he's got he that, he's got that magnificent... <laughs> <just iron grass. laughs> and that, and that fucking hairdo he's got too. <laughs> Man knows how to do his hair. Anyway. We will get to Grosky when we get to him. For now, <clears throat> let's go to chapter one. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> Gosh, just look at this place, Professor. So posh, I feel I should be wearing a monocle. <laughs> Quite so, Luke. Every fixture and fitting is the very height of decadence. I wager the rest of the terrain is just as grand. Have a little exploration. All right, but first, let's click around, see if we can- Ah! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, Luke. Your bag is wide open and your belongings are all scattered about. Oops, so they are. You should put your things away before we start exploring the train. As, yeah, so we should. Yeah. Yeah, Luke, come on. Luke's belongings are all over the place and need to be packed away in his trunk. Use the stylus to move objects into the trunk, making sure none of them overlap. When everything has been placed neatly into the trunk, touch submit. Oh boy, okay, I can move this one. That's good. It's not correct, but it sounds nice. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's what matters, I suppose. All right. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> First puzzle, he got stuck. That's fair. It, it's one of these. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a piece as well. Oh, and I don't. Th yeah, they would. They would. They would have given me a tutorial on rotating had they uh, uh, had this puzzle involve rotating. But there is no rotating. So, boop. Whoa. Hmm. Okay. Wait. 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 Uh, hmm. Okay. I might be getting a little stuck myself. Oh! Wait, no, that leaves a lot of open space. Yeah. I eventually get it to like a certain point where like after a while it just sort of... <laughs> I just need the reset just to regather my thoughts. Ugh. Nope, nope. Nope, nope. Uh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, I figured it out. Oh, no. 
<laughs> this is just this is this is how the stream is gonna be. <laughs> oh, it's gonna look me a messy bitch. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh oh god. Hmm. I need to like I need to figure out like certain like tells, I suppose. Like if there's like certain pieces that like belong in the corner or not. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, wait, oh, wait, wait. I just, I just realized, oh. Got it. Hmm, let's see if this works. <laughs> face of cake. <laughs> oh God, I do hear it now. It does sound like he's saying face of cake. Fuck. <laughs> Luke should be able to properly close the trunk trunk now. <laughs> One, I, I heard I heard it that time. God, that DS compression, lovely. Woo! It was a tight squeeze, but everything's finally packed away. We we're in rather a hurry, so I suppose you didn't really have time to pack properly. I do feel better with everything put away. Come on, Professor, let's do some exploring. Yeah, let's go. But first, oh, I thought there would be a coin in there. There's a coin. Is there a coin in here? There's a coin! Is there a coin in here? There's not a coin. Oh! No! <laughs> I will be doing as many as I can, but I don't want to slow down the pace of the, of the stream. Sugar's covered with ants. Oh dear, I'll have to remember to get sugar for my tea elsewhere. Curious though, isn't it? How did they get here? Speaking of ants, try this one on for size. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a big skip. <laughs> Busy ants work tirelessly carrying food back to their nest. One such ant was returning with food when she bumped into an acquaintance in front of the nest. What are you playing at? Didn't you notice that you took the longest path possible back to the nest? Try thinking about where you're going next time. Knowing that the ant never traveled on the same path twice, can you trace the route to the returning ant walked to get to her nest? Oh god. There was a puzzle just like this in Curious Village, and it tripped me the heck up. It was like, oh, you need to find the longest path. God. Uh, there's ants on this train, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so maybe start like. Mm -mm. Wait, wait. Maybe do this. That way, we cover more area. And then it goes. Down. Okay, if we go left from here, that would make the route a bit short. So I say go that way, that way, that way, that way. Nope, that way, that way, and there, that way. Yeah, that one was a, that one was a bit easier, probably because it was a lot earlier in the game than the one in Curious Village. <laughs> Perhaps all the heavy lifting kept this little ant from thinking about her path home. If only she thought about where she was going, she could have saved herself a lot of walking. You've got it, my boy. While I'm no fan of ants and my sugar, you have to admire their craftiness and work ethic. I mean, because even the sugar on the Molentary Express is extra fancy. Haha, <laughs> I'm sure those ants are genuine sugar connoisseurs. Ah, <laughs> uh, alright. That's enough poking and prodding around. M maybe. I, I, I was just checking for more coins. Uh, wait. Okay, let's go. Remember, Luke, we're here to find the Elysian box, so don't get too sidetracked. You'll have to tell me twice, Professor! Now why don't we start by investigating the train? Can we get to the Afro Man? Probably. The Professor and Luke decide to explore the Molentary Express. Okie doke. Oh, hello. I hear the rooms at the front of the train are super duper fancy, and the doorknobs are made of gold. No one's allowed except for really rich people. So, mistress, are you really rich? Because if you are, you can go see the super duper fancy rooms. Super duper fancy rooms? And none but the extremely wealthy can enter. If our young friend is correctly informed, there must be a set of deluxe rooms in the next carriage. Wow, I'd love to see what those look like. But they're simply smashing. I bet they are. But, uh, which way do we go? Forward or back? I'm going to go forward first. Well, thank you, game, for giving me a giving me a voice because I wasn't really sure where I was gonna go with that. <laughs> that reminds me, I believe it's Disney time for my sweet baby. I'm off to visit the dining hall. <laughs> Gosh, that woman was just the type I'd expect to see on the Molentary Express. So 
talk about rich and flashy. Quite. This train is full of many well-heeled patrons like the woman we just met. We must watch our deeds and words here. A formal setting demands formal manners, don't you think? Absolutely, Professor. All right. Uh, oh, what's in here? Oh, oh no. <laughs> I see one out of place object and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Look at the craftsmanship on this picture, Luke. I'm almost certain it was handmade. Who knew something as ordinary as a picture could be so fancy? It would be more relaxing seeing in your suite with a cold beverage and watching the sunset. Not everything that's served in pictures is good to drink, however. Look at this puzzle, for example. Oh boy, here we go. Oh god, there's puzzles on that. Oh fuck. A sour defeat. Two men, known, known here as one and two, are playing a strange game. First, both men put their empty pitchers on the table. Next, a judge brings a pitcher filled with vinegar and places it in either spot A or B. The judge then starts shifting the vinegar from one pitcher to any adjacent pitcher over and over. After moving the liquid 55 times, the owner of the vinegar-filled pit pitcher must down it in one. Ugh. If you were to judge and secretly wanted two to drink the vinegar, would you place the pitcher down in spot A or B? Well. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's not I'm sure it's not the actual way they want you to do it. I'm sure it's like a trick way to do it but I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just I'm just messing around right now <laughs> anyway I think I miscounted somewhere <laughs> I'm sure I miscounted somewhere oh Christ I bet you just do it like five times and figure it out. Oh, you know, that's a good point. One, two, three, four, five. So it's B then. Here goes. <laughs> oh. oh, I didn't expect that to actually that work. Nicely done. The vinegar changes pitchers 55 times, which is an odd number of pours. Regardless of where you place your pitcher, whichever pitcher sits in the middle of the three will always contain the vinegar after an odd number of pours. Therefore, in order for Mantu to drink, the vinegar-filled pitcher must go in spot B, because doing so will put Mantu's pitcher in the middle, thus guaranteeing the vinegar ends up in his pitcher. <laughs> Damn, I'm a genius. Damn right. Excellent work. Now let's press on, shall we? We mustn't stand around all day. Okay. But, but... Okay, I was looking for, I was looking for more, uh, I was looking for more coins. Is there any equivalent to the robot dog in this game that lets you sniff out coins later? I hope so, because I have never been good at finding these. <laughs> oh, it is the hamster. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of faces around here. Too bad we can't really interact with a lot of them. Only the ones that... Oh, wait. Professor, why don't we get something to eat? My stomach is grumbling something fierce. Well, first, I'm going to talk to this dude. I'm dreadfully sorry, sir. I'm afraid all the seats in our fine establishment are taken right now. Oh, what a pity. Indeed it is, sir. But while you're waiting for a table, might interest you in a puzzle. All right. Puzzle number seven. Four couples. Four couples sit in a crowded dining car. All diners are sitting next to or across from their partners. The Joneses are sitting by the aisle. The mustachioed Mr. O'Connor is sitting next to his wife. Mr. Lambert is sitting opposite of his wife. Using the information above, can you determine where Miss Hadley is sitting? What? <laughs> okay. Circle her and touch submit. Okie dokie. Uh, hmm. Alright. Let me whip out the memo first. Yeah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. So, Jones is sitting by the aisle. Mr. O'Connor is sitting next to his wife. There's only one with the mustache here, so I'm going to assume these are the, uh, these are the Connors. Uh. Which means Lambert cannot be over here because he is sitting opposite of his wife. Which means Mr. Lambert is either here or here. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. 
Best to learn. Well. Okay, wait, wait. If the Joneses are sitting by the aisle, I assume, yeah, the aisle, yeah, 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 that means, yeah, by the middle, which means these two are probably the Joneses right here, I would assume, which would leave Lambert to be here, sitting opposite of his wife, maybe. And if we're going by that process of elimination, I would say Hadley is right here. Well, only one way to find out. This should do the trick. Hey, that wasn't too hard. And there we have it. That's right, Mustache and Mr. O'Connor sitting next to his wife, so on the left must must be sitting next to their spouses. Mr. Lambert sitting opposite of his wife, so he must be sitting at the right hand table. The Jones are sitting by the aisle, so they must be C and G. That leaves E and F as the Hadleys. Okay. That's exactly right, sirs. They say nothing whets the appetite like a hearty puzzle. Oh, it appears a table has just become available. Allow me just a moment to tidy it up, and I will be happy to escort you to your seats. Great, I'm starving. Oh, good, our table is finally ready. We must be taking our seats then. But I'm please wait just a moment. In truth, these passages have been waiting long. Nonsense, we'll not hear another word of this. You take these people before us? We are insulted. I do apologize, madam, it's just that these gentlemen arrived before you, and... We will not be kept waiting, do you understand? Not a single second! Now out of our way! Madam! Well, fuck. That, that sure did happen. What a... Yeah, huh, you're right, what a Karen. Talk about pushy! Oh, I do apologize, sir. It's a lovely observation deck in the last carriage of the train. Please feel free to, to relax there for a few minutes while I prepare a new table for you. What's it called in Europe, Americans? God. Wow. Ouch. Okay. Fair enough, though. Fair enough. Maintaining one's composure while dealing with difficult customers is truly admirable. Come, Luke. Let's give him some breathing room. We'll take a look at the deck and return to the dining car later. <coughs> Alright, the professor and Luke decide to visit the train's observation deck. Alright, let's... Oh, what's over here? Is that the observation deck, or is this... Oh, no, this is the kitchen. Wow, just look at all the stuff there is to eat. Yes, it seems the Monterey Express is a first-class operation, right down to the kitchen. Oh, my. Passengers in the kitchen. I'm sorry, but we just can't have that. Those dirty clothes of yours probably violate all sorts of health regulations, you know. Why, I'll have you know, there's nothing at all dirty about our clothes. Uh, say what you like, short stuff, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm running a kitchen here. You just have to think about what could happen if the yucky outside germs made in here because of you. I see your point. Terribly sorry for the intrusion and any worry we may have caused you, good sir. Oh, all right. I'm sorry too, sir. Wait, what's that? <gasps> Yo, the hamster! Professor, look here. It seems our friend, the co it seems our friend the cook, has been keeping a pet in the kitchen. How arrogant of him to lecture other people about germs! Oh boy, I guess the cat's out of the bag now. Listen, I know it's against the rule to keep a pet in the kitchen, but he's my only friend. See, furry or not, he's the only. Person, uh, creature I've got to talk to in here. My, my, he certainly is generously proportioned, isn't he? <laughs> Layton, please. <laughs> he's a hamster, I presume. Of course he's a hamster. That quiet dignity makes him the noblest of all creatures. When I first started working here, I needed someone to keep me company, so I bought him. Because I fed him all the table scraps you take back, which makes for a diet that's a bit, um, uh, rich. Actually, he piled on the pounds, and to be honest, I'm starting to wonder if it isn't bad for his health. I wonder, could I ask you a favor? Would you mind looking after my friend for a little while? Always here with me, I can't help but feed him. The scraps of foie gras and pastry soon add up. You mean you want us to take care of him and help him get into shape? Sounds like a great idea to me. I mean, uh, what do you think, Professor? Can you please keep him for a little while? Well, I've always said that helping rodents in need is among the duties of every true gentleman. We'd be happy to take custody of this hamster until he sheds some of that excess baggage. Oh, thank you so much. It's a real weight off my shoulders. And off his waist, hopefully. Alright. The hamster minigame is an add to a trunk. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You can check on the hamster by touching the hamster icon inside the professor's trunk. Oh, one more thing. Since I won't be seeing the little fella for a while, could you give him this apple? He loves him so. 
All right, you got a new hamster toy. Use this apple to help your hamster get into shape. I'm going to miss my furry friend. Please look after him. Don't worry, he's in good hands. Oh boy, let me see if I can fit Hammy Boy in there. Uh, I can, but there will have to be no space. <laughs> I could, I could do Hammy Boy with a Y and have it be the space. But yeah, with if it's if it's if it's going to be accurate, I can't really can't really put a space there, unfortunately. Also, is that the hamster silhouette? Because if so, man, large, large. <laughs> Hammy boy should be fine then. Okay. Luke has named the portly hamster Hammy Boy. <laughs> okay, little chap. From now on, anywhere I go, you'll go too. Oh, look at him. <laughs> it appears that your way with animals has earned you a new friend, Luke. I think so too, Professor. All right, I don't know when I should be checking in on the hamster, but I assume I'll have to regularly. All right, now we head to the deck. Okay, wait, there's more rooms out and about. <clears throat> oh, hell no, heavy boy vibing with the water bottle. <laughs> Looks like there's no one here at the moment. Yeah, let's check again later. Okay. Hi there. Welcome aboard, sirs. May I interest you in a refreshing beverage or a scrumptious snack? Oh, thank you, but I think, don't think we need any snacks right now. Of course you don't. I pull my best smile for nothing. Most passengers eat in the dining car. It's so ritzy I can't say I blame them. With competition like that, it's hard to sell so much as a cup of tea. I'm so bored. I've got a while until my shift finishes, so help me pass a little time with this puzzle, would you? Okie dokie. Pile of pancakes one. Here's a tasty puzzle for you. Can you move the pile of pancakes from the blue plate on the left to the red plate on the right? Wait, though. It's not as easy as it sounds. You must follow these rules. You can only move one at a time. You cannot place a pancake on top of another one that is smaller than itself. You can use the middle pancake and move the pancake. You can use the middle plate and move the pancake as many times as you like. Oh, it's this game's juice pitcher. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it is. However, this one's a lot easier. Just leave it to me. Strikes again. Delicious! This puzzle is actually a variant of the famous Tower of Hanoi, a puzzle invented by the by a French mathematician all the way back in 1883. Yeah. Whoa! Check out the brain on you, kiddo. So listen, our next stop in this dinky little two cow village is this. Our next stop is in this dinky little two cow village called Dropstone, right? There's like nothing there. I wish we could stop somewhere more exciting for a change. I guess that's working a job for you. Sometimes you just have to deal with crippling boredom. Damn. Suck to suck, I guess. <laughs> uh, what's in here? Oh, hello. Or if he's one of those brooms that can fly. Is that a bucket or a cauldron? No, that's a bucket. A cauldron is like a big old, like, round pot. But what is this? Hmm. Say, Professor, does that little shack over there seem familiar to you? Indeed. That's a mistake, and this must be the residence of you-know-who. I have a feeling she'll be a big help to us again. Oh, yeah. We'll have to meet her again later. I didn't really get to see her too much in the first game, but I have a feeling we'll be seeing her a bit more in the second. Well, not in a second. In a little while. My, what a lovely deck. Wow, this is the best! This breeze feels great! Indeed, the scenery is simply breathtaking. Look, Luke, you can see a lake over there. The sky is so blue! Just look at all those trees fly by! Now that's what I call a view! All this talk of pristine scenery reminds me of a puzzle I once heard. Why don't you try it? Oh, God. Here we are. Puzzle 11. Trees in the forest. The forest below contains four different types of trees. Use the styles to divide the forest into four sections, each containing one of each type of tree. Okay. Well, here's one. Uh, 
Wait. Wait, hold up, hold up. Okay, there's one. And then from there, there's two. Oh, I think I got it. I got it. Easy, easy. Mm. Let's see if this works. That was yeah, this one just crazy. like already, already you can kind of tell they've toned it down just a little bit from Curious Village, which I very much appreciate. Nice view. Now take a moment to admire the gorgeous scenery. That's exactly it. Well done. Well, do you expect any less, Professor? <laughs> I feel so nice out here, I almost forgot we were supposed to be searching for the Elysian box. I can't say I blame you, Luke, but that box led poor Andrew to his death. Come what may, I will solve this mystery. Of course! I think we finally have a good grasp of this train's layout. I mean, we didn't really go to the- we didn't really go to the other end, but yeah. It's high time we began our investigation proper. Okay, Professor, let's get to it. Professor and Luke decide to begin their investigation of the train. Oh wait, what's this? Who just leaves their trash out here? God! Look at that. Someone's left some rubbish on the, on the deck here. Some people have no manners. Luke, a true gentleman, cleans up after himself, and others should the need arise. What do you say we take care of this mess? All right, cleaning up one. Oh no! Not another block puzzle. Put that rubbish into the bin where it belongs. Move the block obstructing your path and slide the pile of rubbish into the bin at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Luke decided to do the thing that they just said they'd do. <laughs> yeah, it is a little, yeah, a little needless, but eh. <laughs> I mean, we already have so many recap tools, it's kind of like, eh, w why? But you know, it's it's whatever. It's fine. I'm nitpicking. Hmm. Wait. We gotta get something into that box. I'm realizing I can't. I can't just keep rotating forever. Or maybe, <laughs> unless. <laughs> You gotta get one of the small blocks out of the bit. Fair enough, yeah. Why did I reset? I don't know. I could have just as easily just. Boop. Wait. I've never been good with block puzzles, to be honest. If it wasn't obvious from the Curious Village dreams. <laughs> Ugh. Big brain pain. Oh, wait, wait. We're getting there. Oop. We're making some progress. Ah. <laughs> well, I guess this is our first big 45 puzzle, big 45 picker at puzzle for a reason. Ooh. It's no joke. No joke at all.
Okay, I'm obviously missing a step here, but... Hmm. Maybe I need a fresh start. All right, yeah, I need to look at this. I'd say the most obvious move is to just... Almost, damn, all right. Eh. It happens, I'll, I'll work my way back there. It's just, I need to, I need to just, I just, I, I need a moment. I'm sorry, my, my, <laughs> I process things in a very just sort of weird sort of way. It's just, ah. I gotta have a very particular setup. Just needed to change one step. Okay, fair enough. That one's on me. Now I gotta restart from the beginning. Oh, that shit hurts. One blue in the, okay, gotcha. If I can even get one in there at this point, I, I think I may have, ah. Well, no, no, there's gotta be a way to like undo it a certain way and like get it to work like that, but. I just don't know how. Yeah, I just gotta, just gotta work it out, yeah. I, I genuinely feel like I've like locked myself out of something. I genuinely feel like I've locked myself in one place somehow. I know I haven't. I know there's got to be a way to work myself out of this, but it just doesn't feel like it. Ugh. Just give me a minute to think. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, yeah, hold on. I got it. Oh, no. Please, God. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this one's definitely gonna take. Yeah, this game's definitely gonna take a lot longer than Curious Village because we're not even out of the first chapter yet. <laughs> I just realized. Oh.
I have to get the yellow in the top left somehow, but I just don't, I can't. My, my brain cannot compute how, oh wait, nope, no, that won't work. No, Perry, what are you doing? That, that, that'll never work. Come on. What are you, stupid or something? Maybe if I could move this guy out of the way. Ugh. I keep fucking. I I keep fucking doing the same thing. I keep doing the goddamn same thing where I keep locking myself in one place. I'm so fucking pissed off at myself. I guess. Try getting started with the instructions below. Stack the four blue blocks on top of each other with the first one at the bottom of the bin. Next, find a way to get one of those four blocks in the little indentation on the top right corner. Once it's in place, you won't need to move that block again. Okay. So what, like that? And you get this guy over here or something? Okay, then what? Are you sure we don't have to touch the blue one again? Cause, uh, hmm. It's so hard to reset myself without just pressing restart. Ugh. Why are you not Why are you not one pixel why, why are you not one pixel shorter
Hmm, purgatory, my favorite. beneath both the well if I could substitute this for the other guy then yeah definitely but mm, I, can, I can get it between I can get it between them not not one on top of the other though I can get the bottom one down ah this should do the trick huh wonderful <laughs> You ever just complete a puzzle on accident? <laughs> there! Now there's no litter coloring up that amazing view! Wonderful, isn't it? Keeping a place tidy really brightens it up. How many turns was that? 165, I think. Doesn't the, doesn't the index tell you, like, your best record on some of them? It does not. That was also my first hint coin usage, and it was basically for naught. Ugh. Okay, I at least got the coin back. Fucking hell, okay. Never get- oh, who are you? Ah, there's nothing like travel by rail to put a spring in your step. He both sounds exactly like how to- I'd, I'd imagine, and nothing. He also looks like a human Goomba. I couldn't agree more. All right, good luck with your stream, Ollie. And there's no better way to do it than on a train as fine as yours, Mr. Beluga. Hmm, so you know my name, do you? But of course, this train and its owner have quite a reputation in London. I've seen your face in the papers more than a few times. Oh, is that so now? I'm sorry, uh, my friend, but I can't say I know you as well as you seem to know me. The name is Herschel Leighton. I'm a professor of archaeology by trade, but a train enthusiast on the side. I've heard tales of this train's grandeur, so I decided it was time to experience it firsthand. Well, isn't that something? It certainly is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Layton, was it? Oh my, just look at how late it's gone. I really have to run. Do enjoy your time aboard. <laughs> Alright, let's move onward then. Why don't we head back to the dining car now, Luke? I've worked up quite an appetite. The professor and Luke decide to visit the dining car a second time. <laughs> Game, please. <laughs> Do you have a puzzle for me, honey? No? Okay. Gosh, I'm about to just keel over from boredom. Sure, the job pays well, but it's so slow it's painful. Welcome back, sirs. My deepest apologies for the long wait. Let me show you to your seats. Great, it's finally time to eat! My sentiments exactly. Wow, look at all these choices! It's enough to make my head spin! Oh, look over there. There's some sort of commotion going on. You call this hot cuisine? I call it slop! And you're telling me you serve this to our customers? Uh, I'll make some more. I'll make up some more right away, sir. <laughs> Get that mess out of my sight this instant! 
Uh, but of course, I'm very sorry to have displeased you. Another thing, look at these vases in that picture. Talk about tacky. Replace them immediately. But sir, that piece is a quintessential work by the world-renowned... I don't care if the Queen of England painted it. Replace it and be quick about it. Uh, of course, sir. I'll stop making the arrangements immediately. Isn't that the same man we saw earlier? I think I've ever seen anyone so bossy and loud. That was indeed Mr. Beluga. It's a shame that picture wasn't to his taste. I think it's marvellous. <laughs> Is that British Bezos? <laughs> so, I mean, sure. I kind of made, I kind of already made the comparison to him looking like literally like a human Goomba. He's got the head. He's got the fucking Goomba shoes. <laughs> he just, he has that look. Speaking of pictures, Luke, I have the most intriguing puzzle for you. Oh boy, another puzzle. This one's only 15 uh, instead of 45. So maybe it'll be better. Hmm. The drawing is made up of curved lines that want that intersect to create sections. If you want to color the entire canvas so that no section touches the section of the same color, what is the fewest number of colors you can use? You can use the color as many times as you like, as long as it doesn't touch the section with the same color. Once you have your answer, touch input answer and enter the number of colors. Okay. Hmm. Alright. Hmm. Can I, like, use the colors? No. Only one color on the memo pad? That's great. Okay. <laughs> well. Hmm. Well. Logic dictates that since there are four colors, like, shown it would be four, but I feel like that's a trick question. Oh wait, we do have two colors on the memo? Black and, no oh yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so let's try two then. You got black, white, black, white. All right, they ain't touching yet. Ain't touching yet. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna assume, like, I'm just being a bit sloppy with my outlines right now, so I'm just gonna assume, like, the edges probably don't count. They mean, like, the sides, right? Yeah. Okay. Because, like, I feel like otherwise... Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, uh, it kind of works. Almost kind of works, except for this corner piece right here. So maybe you'd need like a third color for that. Is the answer three? Hmm. Let's see if this works. Oh, hi. Legends Apprentice strikes again. That's right, you only need three colors to fill in the drawing. Most of the drawing can be done with two, but that one pesky area in the bottom left requires a third color to complete. Yep, yep. There we go. Expertly solved, Luke. After a puzzle like that and a filling meal, I feel the rest is in order. Let us retire to our room. Okie doke. Hello there, sorry to interrupt your game, but there's something important you should know. As you progress through the story, some puzzles will disappear from their original location. These puzzles are then moved to Granny Riddleton's shack, where they can be solved at any time. Here's the first set of puzzles to be sent to the shack. No puzzles appear on the next screen, it means there are no unsolved puzzles to send right now. Damn! We missed one. The Professor and Luke decide to return to their room in Carriage 3. Alright. Now what do we have here? My boy, my sweet little boy, you've got to do something right this instant. Search the entire train! Madam, please, please calm down so I can understand the situation. Oh, Inspector Chelney, I had no idea you were on board. Well, well, for this is Mr. Layton. What are the chances, eh? Well, enough small talk. I have other matters to attend to, namely a missing child. It seems this woman's child has gone off somewhere. I don't suppose you've seen him around. 
No, I don't believe I've seen any young boys. My little boy wandered off and he hasn't returned yet. I'm simply at my wits end worrying about him. Tell to man, demand you drop whatever it is you're doing and help me find my boy. Hmm, she's going to be, he's been going on like this from the moment I walked in. I understand your concern, madam. My assistant and I will be glad to aid you in your search. Of the best chance of recovering your son if we start searching immediately. Are you still here? If you have time to stand around talking, hurry up and bring my boy back. Seems the only clues we have to go on are this shoot the toy left behind and his name, Tom. Try to squeeze more details out of the woman, but it's useless. She just keeps demanding I search the place. Damn, that is a tiny fucking shoe. This is one of Tom's shoes. It's positively tiny, isn't it? Yes, I find it quite curious myself, Luke. Very puzzling indeed. I didn't think children this feet with feet that size could even walk. Indeed. Hmm, you got Tom's shoe. You can find items you pick up in the professor's trunk. While riding on the Monterey Express, Babette's little boy, Tom, manages to disappear. If the shoe left behind is any indication, Tom must be a very young child. Where could a child that small have wandered off to on his own? The professor, the professor looks like the turtle's little dead, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Anyway, there's no one here. Oh, I thought that was I thought that was Granny's place. Okay, maybe that was the next one over. Oh hi, we'll talk to you. Sure. Excuse me, madam. Have you seen a small boy wandering around here? He would be missing a shoe. No, can't say that I have. There's no way I forget seeing a boy with only one shoe. I see. Well, thank you very. Oh, but while we're on the topic of shoes, perhaps you could help me with a little predicament of my own. Okay. <laughs> Puzzle 18. The shoe maze. Oh, God. Here's a maze made up of shoes. Your task is to travel from the start point to the goal. You may only travel horizontally or vertically one space at a time. You must alternate between left and right shoes every step. Also, you may not pass through any of the walls in the maze. Touch each space one at a time to highlight the path you want to take. If you make a misstep, you can deselect that space by touching it again. Okay. Welcome to the shoe zone. Wait, eh? Nope. Fuck. Ah! Wait! I think we got it. And now to test my theory. Easy. And there we have it. Good job. That was some fancy footwork. Well, blow me down. You got quite the brainy bunts underneath that hat. All right. I don't want to hear you say blow me down again, though. All right. Nothing in here. That's that's Layton's room. We're good. Let's move. Oh man, I'm dog food. What's the matter? What's the matter, mister? What? Oh, hey. Okay, so I snuck into my uncle's room and borrowed his camera, right? Thing is, and I dropped it. I went here trying to find all the pieces for like an hour, but I've only found one. That's quite the predicament. Yeah, and if word gets out about this wrecked camera, I'm gonna catch major flack from the boss man. Whoa, brain flash incoming. Dig this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this busted hunk of junk. You do with it what you want, just get rid of the thing, will ya? Okay, catch you on the flip side. What? Well, hey, come back here! The camera minigame has been added to the trunk. Oh. You got a squarish part. Use it to rebuild the camera in the professor's trunk. The camera option has been added to the trunk. Reassemble the broken parts of the camera there. To touch it, touch the trunk icon, then touch the camera icon. Okie doke. Now let's go. I wonder what kind of luxuries there are in that carriage. Hold it right there, man. Sammy Thunder says the entrance to this carriage is for VIPs only, capiche? Now, I know you'd like to sneak a peek, but the whole carriage has been booked, so that's a no-go. The people who reserve rooms in this carriage must be super rich mega tycoons. Indeed. I wonder what it must be like to have that much space to, to yourself on a train of this caliber. Well, for now, I suppose you just have to keep wondering, eh, Professor? <laughs> yes, quite. Damn. All right, let's move on. 
<laughs> Perry, what's his occupation? Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh wait, everybody's just gone. Damn, we empty now. I mean, he seemed he seemed to be managing the train. He seems to be part of the train staff. Is this something's falling behind here? Oh, yo, a hat. It appears to be a cap of some sort, but I don't think I can reach it from here. My mind keeps giving the chauffeur chauffeur, but it's definitely not that. Yeah, I'm not sure. All he says is that he's like on the tr he's like part of the he's like part of the train staff, and I don't know like what in particular. <laughs> I want to say maybe the bouncer for the VIP rooms, but eh, I don't think I don't think that's needed in a train. I don't know. I don't think I can reach it from here. Hmm. Maybe the cap belongs to Tom. We certainly shouldn't rule out that possibility. Oh, hey, since we're on the subject of the caps, have you ever heard this one, Professor? Oh boy, puzzle fourteen. Red cap. Okay, a teacher had everyone in her class close their eyes. While none of the students were looking, she slipped caps onto their heads and said, Okay, everyone, open your eyes and look at your friend's caps. Whoever sees four or more people wearing red caps gets a red balloon, and whoever doesn't gets a blue balloon. In a class of, some, in a class of ten children, only some got a red balloon. But how many? Hmm. That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is the... Yeah, that, that is the question, Perry, but, uh, you know, it would be good to, like, actually, like, think up an answer to that question. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so at a class of ten, hmm. It doesn't, okay, wait, oh, wait, not, yeah, whoever sees for, but it doesn't say how many she put the caps on. Well, if some of them, well, some of them did, well, some of them did get a red balloon. That means that they're not being, they're not being a jerk, and that at least four of them do be wearing those Yankees. Yeah, but in order to, in order to uh, see that many, there has to be that many. So yeah, definitely, it's not a trick question. There's no zero is not an answer here. Hmm. What if it's, what if it's six? Cause like there's ten students, and like the four cap, and like a bare minimum of four caps. Like that seems like the only like real answer that you could do without having to do some major guesswork. To me, anyway. Let me try that. And now to test my theory. Uh huh. Yep. And there we have it. That's right, you only you you know that only some children got red balloons. If five or more were wearing a red cap, every child in the class would at least see four red caps and get a red balloon, so it must be fewer than five. But if three or fewer were wearing red caps, no one would see four red caps. Therefore, four children must have had red caps, and the other six received red balloons. There we go. Easy peasy. Drat, I'm sure I could stump you with that one. Better luck next time, Luke. For now, we'd better return to searching for that lost little boy. Oh right, yep. Can I get back to that? Now that you mention it, how do you suppose Tom has a worm his way into such a tight space? Hmm, good question. Plot twist, Tom is like a rat or something. Rat boy. <laughs> Food scraps, if I'm not mistaken. Do you suppose Tom wandered into the kitchen to grab something to eat? Well, it's possible, though. If that's the case, the child is certainly lacking in the manners department. Hmm. Oh! Wow, that flower vase looks like it costs a pretty penny. Lovely decorations really do wonders for a room, don't they? Doubly so in the case of flowers. <laughs> Damn Tom eating from the ground like an asshole. <laughs> Anyway, puzzle 16. Crazy daisies. 
But I needed I needed some more sleep. I know I I know I was complaining earlier about waking up late, but I I I just need more sleep. I think. Fuck. I'm sorry. <sighs> Now for something on the flowery side. Of the three pictures labeled A, B, and C, one is actually the same as the picture from the far left. However, the image on the far left has had its contents flipped left to right and its colors inverted and changed to black and white. Of A, B, and C, which picture is the same as the black and white picture on the far left? Okay. $19. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, if the colors were inverted... Well, that rules out C immediately, because this is inverted. White is black and black is white. This still has black on the inside of the flower. So C is already off the table. Okay. Uh, hmm. Now let's work out the rest. It's got to be A or B. Hmm. All right. Uh... I'm just going to compare the splotches at this point because I don't really see where else it would. Hmm. The difference between A and B is so tiny. Oh no. Oh god. Uh. Wait. Hold on. Is it. Okay, is it literally just this little pixel, right? That is the only thing I can tell. <laughs> that is the only difference I can tell between the two. <laughs> is that is that seriously it? <laughs> also, the board of the notepad seems to be covering it. Oh. Oh, Christ. I think it is A then, because like this dot is not th that is that is yeah that's a dick move. <laughs> Just leave it to me. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. That's right. Picture A is the same as the one on the far left, as shown above. Pictures B and C have slight variations. Yeah. Slight variations. <laughs> God, that is so. Goddamn minor. How? Nice job, but not all puzzles are such a breeze. Anyway, let's keep moving for now. Not an asshole like little Tommy eating from the ground, though. It's fair. Alright, let's move. Oh. Hi. Oh. Is everything alright, miss? I'm fine, thank you. Excuse me. Say, did she seem familiar to you at all, Professor? Hmm, yes, now that you mention it, something about her did seem rather familiar, as you say. Huh. Huh, yeah, familiar. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, sunny boys. Ever get all knock kneed and goose bumply from terrifyingly hard puzzles? Well, have no fear. The beautiful and clairvoyant Granny Riddleton stands before you, ready to help. Just as I thought. Who else could this tiny house belong to? Hey, wait a second. What are you doing here anyway? So you've heard of me, eh, Shorty? Good to know I'm still a hit with the young'uns. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course I've heard of you. We met before, remember? Hmm, nope. I suspect you've got the wrong Granny boy. Never seen you before in my life. But you're here now, so that means you want to hear my spiel, right? Ah, uh, not really. Oh, no need to be so modest. Allow me to thank you for visiting me by bestowing a little tidbit of information on you. My specialty, you see, is puzzles. Puzzles people forget about. Puzzles people miss. Surely you boys have had a few of those, eh? No need to turn red. It happens to the best of puzzlers. Wait, what I do, you see, is I take those poor lost little puzzles and invite them to come and stay with me. I imagine any puzzles you left behind have found their way to my shack as well, if you want to say hello. If the shack is empty, you'll just have to get out there and find some more puzzles. Why don't you take a peek inside to see what's there? Sure thing. Might as well give it a try. It's just the one. I want to see what it's all about at least. Oh, it's only 10? Damn, I could have gotten this one. After trying to fold a strip of paper in half, you notice that one side of the folded strip is one centimeter longer than the other. Determined to get it right, you fold the strip again, only to discover that now the other end of the folded strip is one centimeter longer than the other. You've now made two fold creases in the strip. What is the distance in millimeters between the two's creases? Uh-oh. 
<laughs> it's it's simple. It's simple. You just convert you, you convert centimeter to millimeter, right? Am, am I right? Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> what what is one centimeter to one millimeter? Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just fucking, it's just fuck, it's just fucking ten, isn't it? Yeah, that's what the math says. Yeah, it's just ten. Yeah, that's how it works. This should do the trick. Yeah, pretty simple, pretty simple, pretty easy. Leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right, the distance between the creases is one centimeter or ten millimeters. If you're having trouble visualizing this, imagine that the matchbox shown above has a height of one centimeter. Imagine that one of the matchbox's sides is removed. It looks just like your strip of paper after being folded twice. The excess length of your folds is represented by the remaining sides. Okie dokie, we did it. Pog champ. <laughs> Perry, shut up. <laughs> Perry, you are like probably the only person who has ever said Pog Champ after clearing a latent puzzle. Especially one that easy. Oh, hello. Fucking croissant hair. Oh, passenger. Sorry, sir. Didn't mean to get in the way of you using the deck. Uh, no trouble at all, my good man. I take it you're not a passenger then. Nah, I'm just a mechanic, isn't it? I come along for the ride in case something goes belly up. But as you can see, she's sound as a pound. Makes my job dead easy. In fact, I've got so much free time lately, I made up a puzzle all by myself. How about, how about it then? Okay. Puzzle 25, surviving in the wild. Oh. After years of bad business, a zoo has finally run out of money to buy food for its animals. Belly's rumbling from days with no food. The animals make a plan to escape to the zoo. I mean, to escape the zoo. After prying, after prying open the rusty bars on their cages, all the animals attempt to find their way through the maze-like paths of the zoo to the exit. Touch the picture of each animal you think made it safely out of the zoo, and then touch submit to answer. Just remember, just remember, animals show their true colors in the wild. <laughs> Carl from Jimmy Neutron voice. Croissant. <laughs> God, I, I will never get over that clip. He just, he fucking butchers the way you say croissant. He just goes, croissant. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It fucking slays me every time I see it. God. <laughs> it's so fucking whack. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway. This is probably a trick question of some kind. But let me see if I can do this legit first. No, he says it correctly, y'all don't. Okay, fair. We're pronounce- I mean, we, we we pronounce it in the sort of, like, you know, in, in the way that like, I, I suppose makes sense in, like, native- in, like, American English, but in terms of, like, in- in terms of, like, you know, uh, in- in- to us it sounds weird, but it is actually relatively normal, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Maybe giraffe can't fucking make it. I don't know. Hmm. Giraffes aren't really known for their jumping. So. They can't really jump over the maze. Lion can make it. Rabbit can make it. Uh. Let me just mark lion real quick. All right. Uh, no, dead end for you. Yo, alligator, flat fuck Friday. Yo, no. Okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know, it's only Monday, but that's just why I think of my sea of alligators. I, I see alligators and I think, yo, flat fuck Friday. <laughs> so I guess it's just these two then. Consider this puzzle solved. Oh! Well, I suppose that's one possibility eliminated. 
Eh. Okay, what did I what did I mess up on? I'm I'm gonna no, I, I checked I checked and double checked those paths. So that means maybe I was wrong and one of them didn't just remember animals show true colors in the wild. Wait, hold up. Wait. Hold up. Wait. Oh no way, holy shit. <laughs> Is this the dead dog puzzle of this game? And now to test my theory. Huh, wonderful. The only animal that will safely escape the freedom is the lion. While both the rabbit and the lion will make it as far as the will make it as far as the path to the exit. Second, the lion spots the rabbit. He's guaranteed to eat it. Yep. <laughs> Nature, red in tooth and claw. Makes a lot more tasteful. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. But it's still like, damn. Okay. Blimey, you didn't have to polish that one off quickly. It's back to the drawing board for me. All right then. Uh, he didn't have Tom. For, he didn't have anything about Tom for us, though. It was good to check. However, hey, you're here again. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen a little boy with a missing shoe crawling around? No, I don't believe so. But come to think of it, a couple who were just were here were talking about a child. Interesting. You have any ideas as to where we might find this couple now, my good man? <laughs> I will never be over the phrase, the car flattened the poor dog. <laughs> That's just fucking, I can't. That shit, I, I cannot. I believe they are staying in the fourth carriage, sir. May I suggest paying them a visit? A wonderful suggestion. Thank you for, again for your assistance. Come along now, Luke. Let's drop on the couple in the fourth carriage. Okay. Professor and Luke will tie the search for the couple who may have seen Tom. <laughs> Oh, hello. Whoa there, young fellow. You're in the wrong room. My wife and I are staying here. We're dreadfully sorry to intrude, sir. But we are searching for a lost little one. Did you happen to see or hear anything pertaining to this? Oh, sweetie, I do believe they might be talking about that darling cutie pie that just passed by, remember? Uh, oh, yes, he was a cute one. He was small and very clever looking, I'd say. So, you did see Tom, then. He's been missing a while now. Yeah, I didn't know whether he was a girl or a boy, truth be told. Tom's the right nice name, though. Oh, pish posh, dear. I bet, I bet my best tea set that it was a girl who passed by our room. Mm, yes, now that you mention it, I had a feeling that the scamp might have been a girl. But until you flip the thing on its back and get a good long look, you can never be sure, can you? Uh... Yikes. Come on, Confuddle. I don't have the faintest idea who we're talking about anymore. What? Yeah, yeah, my thought exactly. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it looks like this hot lead just turned cold, Professor. On the contrary, Luke, we may have just stumbled on some extremely valuable information. What do you mean, Professor? You'll see. First, let's return to the scene of Tom's disappearance. Professor and Luke decided to return to the side of Tom's disappearance. Ah, Inspector. Tell me, are you any closer to uncovering the whereabouts of that missing child? So, you two are still flipping furniture trying to find that tyke, are you? Hmm? Do you mean to say the child has been found? No, no, not at all. What I'm saying is that the child is no longer on this train. I've asked everyone on board, but no one gave me an answer that suggested they'd seen the lad. Let me take a conclusion that the poor child either got off the train or fell off. <laughs> Jesus, that's, a, that's an assumption. Fell off? Yes, it's entirely plausible given the way children love to run amok. When you combine that with their oversized heads, you've got a recipe for disaster. Tell me. Tell me. Speaking of oversized heads, you want to use yours? <laughs> I'll contact the railway police at the next station, so feel free to give up on your search. Just a moment, Inspector. The windows on this train are very high, and every exit is manned. Given the situation, don't you think it's unlikely a child could have made it off the train unnoticed? All right, I'll humor you. So tell me, Leighton. Where do you think this elusive ankle biter got off to? That I can't say, but something tells me we may have been barking up the wrong tree. Oh, there's just no reasoning with you. Fine, keep playing detective. Nothing will come of it, I tell ya. Yeah, 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 sure. <clears throat> hmm. 
What's on your mind, my boy? You look distracted. It's hard to put my finger on why, but I feel like someone has been watching us for a while. You too. I've been feeling that same sensation myself. Do you think someone might just be tailing us? It's certainly possible. Keep an eye out for anything unusual. Like a shoe! Huh? This looks like one of Tom's shoes, doesn't it, Professor? It certainly does. This is strange, though. It's for the same clothes the shoe the inspector gave us earlier. So it is. <gasps> Aha! So then, Tom must be... Oh, Luke, I do believe we've made a faulty assumption. Hmm? What exactly do you mean? Recall for a moment the events as they have unfolded thus far. Uh, let's see. First, that tiny shoe was found on the floor. That's right, a shoe small enough for a baby. And there was the cap we found in the kitchen. It was loaded in such a tiny corner, I don't know how Tom could have squeezed in there. Correct, in order to get back there, Tom would have to be no more than half your size. I don't think I've seen any boys smaller than myself on the train, now that you mention it. That was my impression as well, which is why I began to consider a different line of thought. Luke, what if you and I have already seen Tom about and didn't even know it? You see, all the while we've been searching for Tom, we've assumed that he's a small child. What if that assumption proves false? What if we've been wrong from the start? I think I see what you're getting at, Professor. The second shoe was a left shoe, identical in every way to the shoe the inspector gave us. If a strange pair of shoes means what I think it does, and that means our friend Tom is... Is? Oh boy, puzzle. Professor Layton has a feeling that Tom may not be the kind of boy he was assumed to be. Move the L-shaped pieces around and arrange them into a plus shape in the middle of the board to reveal Tom's true identity. Oh boy. Speaking of dogs. Oh, you can move these two. Okay, that helps. I thought those were like pieces that were stuck. Tom was on the baby leash after all. Yep. Just leave it to me. Boing. Layton's a friend of Prentice. Strikes me. Prentice. Prentice. <laughs> Good work. Tom is a dog. You recall the girl we saw holding a small dog? I suspect that small dog was our friend Tom. So if we track down that girl, we'll find Tom. Professor and Luke decided to search for the young woman seen holding a little dog. I know you're itching to see what's behind that door, but you can't go backstage without a pass. Well, we just took a really quick peek. No can do, little guy. You need a ticket to do that. I'll tell you what. This pal Sammy Thunder has a puzzle that'll take your mind off that door. Check it. Oh, thank you. The train journey. A number of people are on a train. At the first station of the train pulls into, one-sixth of the people on board get off. At the next station, one-fifth of the remaining passengers get off. The pattern continues at the next station, one-fourth get off, then one-third, and then one-half. Finally, at the final stations, all remaining of the passengers get off the train. Assuming no one got on the train during the journey was the lowest number of people that could have been on the train when it set out. Hmm. Well. Do I have a proposition for you? Six. Just leave it to me. <laughs> that one's that one's too easy. <laughs> Good work. If you assume the train started out with six passengers, and only one person would have set off at each station. The puzzle can be really tough if you don't remember to reduce the number of people on the train at each station along the way. 
And that's how one goes. Well, now the show's over. Well, now the show's over, so move it, will ya? The folks in there find out other passengers hanging around at the side of the door. I'm gonna get an earful. God, I need to slow myself down. I'm fumbling a lot. Oh boy, that's our room, right. Where's the girl? Give us the girl. Oh, hello. Look at that. You've managed to solve at least 12 puzzles. I applaud you. Heartily. I can't see I could just like a couple of odd damn puzzle solvers like yourselves. Let's be pals, eh? Uh, thank you. Why are you, why, why are you saying that if I, oh, hi. Hmm. What about, no, oh, this puzzle's gonna keep me up all night. I'm oh, sorry about that. What's with you two? What can I do for you? What can I do you for? Looking for a young lady with a small dog. Have you seen anyone fitting that description? Yeah, I remember seeing someone like that pass by. I think she was heading to the back of the train. Thank you very much. We'll just be on our way. Now hold it right there, Top Hat. I see how it is. Get all grounds to answer your question and then scoot off without a word. I told you what you want to know. So why I see it, you should, lend it li you should at least lend a man a hand. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I didn't realize you required our help. How may we be of service? A friend gave me this puzzle because I love art, but maybe you'll have better luck with it than I've had. Fancy giving it a go? Sure. Puzzle 12, Clouds and Sky. A man on the train shows you a picture he's painted. Let's say this picture is a total area of 10. You work out how much of it is made up of clouds compared to the area it's made up of sky. I don't think you need to guess the answer. There's a definite method you can use to work this out. How much of the area is sky and how much is cloud? Uh well See my eye is drifting here where the cloud sort of makes a three shape but I'm not sure if that means anything or if that's just like a no that's got to mean something Everything in a latent puzzle is deliberate let's not let's not forget They carefully craft this shit, so... Hmm... Tilt my head a little, maybe? See if I can see any other numbers around? Perhaps? Ah! I'm gonna uh, crane that bitch. Uh... I don't see any other numbers, though. So maybe this isn't the way. Uh... Hmm... Uh, are we sure though? Let me, let me, let me. Yeah, I, uh, I'm starting to think, yeah, that number is just a fluke. I know I just said everything in a latent puzzle is deliberate, but. Hmm. Wait, maybe it has something to do with these dots? The, these n nail dot things, maybe? I mean, this does sort of divide it up into nice even squares, doesn't it? But then what does that, th what does that accomplish? Because like, a lot of these have clouds and a lot of these have skies, it's just like, which one is more dominant in each one, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm chasing the wrong lead here, but let's say we do it with that. Boop. Well, that's sloppy of me. I'm sorry. That was also sloppy. Ugh, I can't seem to divide it quite right, but... 
the way I see it. I think you just gotta like divide it between how much has like the cloud and how much is the sky in each one of these things. If we were to use this method. So like one, two, three, four. Then also one, two, three. Is it six to four? That's what I'm counting. If this is even the right way to do it. I just noticed the dots and I was like, well, you know, maybe that's how we maybe maybe that's how you do it. I don't know. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Nice job. The key here is to use the screws on the front. Yep, okay. Okay. So I was right then. Okay, cool. Oh, so that's how you do it. You've got quite a hair on your shoulders, don't you? Now, that's that girl you were asking about. She's probably on the observation deck behind me. You got a glass part. Use it to rebuild the camera in the professor's trunk. Okie dokie. Professor and Luke decided to talk with the girl on the observation deck. Oh, hello there. Excuse me. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Hey, it's you. Yes, uh, one moment. The dog we saw earlier. Quick, grab him. I just think we are chasing after a dog all along. Oh, oh, right you are, Luke. Now let's get him back to his owner. Oh, um, do you mind if I tag along with you? Of course not. Come along now. Flora is now traveling with you. Check who's traveling with you on the top screen. Professor Luke and Flora decide to run, return Tom to his owner, Babette. Okie dokie. Let's go then. Where is she? She's the one with uh, tell me outside the carriage, right? No, okay, right here. Oh, it's a miracle. You're all right, my sweet little Tommy Wommy. I've missed you so. My baby. Bork. This is Tom. We were on the impression we were searching for a boy, not a mutt with a fancy haircut. How dare you compare my darling Tommy because of some common street mongrel. Lost dogs are no matter for Scotland Yard. Next time he goes missing, find him yourself. Not me, some folks haven't an ounce of sense. Come on, Barton. We've got real cases to solve. Oh, yes, sir, Inspector. Don't you walk away from me. I want to have a word with you about your atrocious manners. <laughs> well, enough of that. Welcome back, sweetie. Where my little Tommy Kins run off to today? He's such a darling that I feel someone might have kidnapped him and held him for ransom. Uh, maybe we should keep Flora's involvement in Tom's disappearance to ourselves. Good idea, my boy. Yeah, Barton's a good lad. <laughs> Heep. I do believe a reward is in order. 
I know it's <laughs> generous, but I insist. You got a new hamster toy. Use this pet house to help your hamster get in shape. I hear we'll be making a stop in a quaint village by the name of Dropstone. How much longer until we get there, Professor? I'm not entirely sure. Why don't we rest until we get there? That should make the time pass faster. Sure. Oh hey, one mystery solved already, huh? Turns out Tom isn't a child as we originally thought, but rather Babette's pet dog. It would seem that Babette's affection for Tom is so deep that she considers him to be much more than just a pet. Time for Hammy Boy to go to the gym. We might need a bit more before we can let him go to the gym, but yeah. The Professor, Luke, and Flora decide to return to their quarters to rest. All right. Bye, bitch. <laughs> Say, Flora, where have you been hiding all this time? Well, until I found that little dog, I'd just been relaxing in my room. Really? You've got your own room? Sure I do. It's the middle one in the third carriage. Wow. You do know it's the room right next to ours, don't you? You were just a wall away from us. I never so much as suspected you were there. It would seem that my powers of observation are rather rusty. Uh-oh. My word. Why is the train stopped? What's going on? Samuel, you don't! What did you do this time? Hey, boss man, just, just chill out. There's a broken train, like, just sitting on the track. So we can move that thing out of our way. We're not going anywhere, man. Get your rear in gear and move it now! I won't have your laziness tarnishing the momentary brand. But, uh, trains are heavy, man. How am I supposed to move it? I will not hear excuses, especially from a layabout conductor like you who barely earns his keep. Conductor. That's the name. Gotcha. Okay. I don't care how you do it. Just get it done. Okay, okay, I'll give it a shot. Just turn, turn it down a notch, Unko. Unko? I might be your uncle, but I'm also president of this railway, and I demand you address me as such. Okay, all right. Whatever you say, your majesty. All right. Where is the block? Where is the blockage? What seems to be the problem here? Oh, sorry, Mr. Passenger. See, this is Giganto Freight Train parked on the tracks, and it's blocking our way. Clearly, the tracks are going to take some time, so uh, sit back with something fizzy and wait. I see. Can I lend you a hand? For real? Oh, yeah, that'd be way helpful. If you can find a way to move the train blocking the tracks, we can, like, get moving. Step aside now. We're not going anywhere until that train moves off the tracks. All right. Do we get this train out of the way, the Monetary Express ain't going nowhere. All right, puzzle 26, train swap. Swap the positions of the two trains along the tracks. Move the carriages one at a time and make sure the numbers by the side of the track match the numbers on each carriage. Okay. Seems simple enough. Change the balls. Wait, hold up, hold up. No, wait, I'm close. I can smell it. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right. Now hurry back to the train. It's behind schedule as is. Hopefully we should now be able to continue our journey. Looks like we're good to go. Just give me a second. We'll be up and running again. Okay. That's all settled. That was easier done than said. We're finally moving again. It shouldn't be too much longer before we arrive in Dropstone. I wonder if we'll find any useful information there. I hope so. You got a round part. Use it to rebuild the camera in the trunk. Okie doke. Oh, God! Oh! That's a nice looking train. 
even if it is obviously 3D. Looks nice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for laughing, but just like the fucking horror sting and the fucking image on the chapter is just Luke looking at a cow. I don't know why. Just that that fucking got me for some reason. Ugh. The train's looking pretty trash, so we're stopping here for repairs. We've got at least three hours till we'll be ready to roll, so why don't you catch up? The, why don't you catch the local sites? Capital idea. Besides, who knows what information we might stumble upon in the village. Professor Luke and Flora decide that taking the sights around Dropstone. But, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that's a good place to stop for today, actually. Because, like, we've entered a new area. We got through a lot of, like, we got through a lot of setup, a lot of prologue. I know it's a, not a, not quite a three-hour stream. But I think this is a good place to stop. So, uh, thank you all for coming. And, uh... We will return on Wednesday with more of Leighton and the Pandora's diabolical casket box. See you then.